welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live. And today I'm going to show you how I made, oh, this is really quick and easy, a uh, little card with the Thoughtful Wishes Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the new ones from the upcoming uh, Stampin' Up! 2024 to 2025 annual catalog. Uh, so this is, it's a, a, actually a whole suite of products. Sorry, I'm going to scoop my camera around here a little bit. I see that I'm all kinds of crazy crooked again. Um, so I, it's a whole suite of products and it includes the little gems and um, the designer series paper, the stamp set bundle. So lots of good things in this. And I believe that the um, suite is called Thoughtful Journey. So, um, so yeah, it's named after the designer series paper. And yeah, it's, it's just really pretty. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say about it. So it's just beautiful. So, hey, Judy and Sally, thanks for joining me today. So this is the card. And actually the designer series paper really does the vast majority of the work on this one. And um, I just added a few extra little accessories. I'm gonna show you how I watercolored the die cuts on here and that's kind of gonna be it. So um, thanks everybody for joining us. See Patricia and Marilyn and Janet as well. So I don't know, I'm sure you all have heard by now. We had a like, kind of an exciting morning in New Jersey. We're all over the news today. Um, there was a little earthquake here, <laughs> a 4.8. So it was a little shaking going on and I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna lie and say I wasn't freaked out for a minute by it because it was just a weird sensation that I've never heard before I mean it just it was very strange because it started with a really loud boom and then everything was shaking and I thought I actually thought a truck had hit our house <laughs> honestly we have a road that's not far out in the front and I thought somebody had lost control and that had hit our house <laughs> that was what it sounded like it felt like it was a very strange sensation but all is good here. Did a walk around the house once we figured out what was going on um, and everything seems to be okay. We didn't even have like a, you know, a cup tip over anything at our house. So we're, we're all safe here. And it sounds like for the most part, that's kind of what everybody experienced with it. But, but yeah, I so saw it was all over the news. So just didn't want you to worry and wonder what was going on here in New Jersey today. So a little crazy. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so this is the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set. And, um, it's got lots of pretty sentiments in it and again just some beautiful floral images and then um, it's got some coordinating dies that are called again thoughtful wishes dies the open dies that you see in here one two and i guess there isn't one for that um, i thought there was one but there's not so these two dies will cut out your two stamped images um, and then there are lots of accessory pieces here as well that you can um, die cut with so lots of pretty options um, and I love this kind of swag look can't wait to use that on something so um, felt it in Pennsylvania yeah we're actually only about 20 miles from what they are calling the epicenter of it so we got a pretty good shake here <laughs> it was it was a little like I said a little odd I've actually been in, lived in a couple places that we've had earthquakes but they were minor enough that I didn't even know that they happened this one I definitely knew there was something going on <laughs> So it was very, it was just strange. So, all right. So let me um, set this stuff aside here and we will get going. Um, oh, one other thing that I did use on this. These are the Unbounded Love dies. And these are, these are also from the upcoming um 2024 to 2025 annual catalog from Stampin' Up. This is a great, it's bundled together and it's actually also part of another suite, bundled together with a sentiment or with a huge stamp set full of sentiments is what I'm trying to say. And so this is one of those that if you don't love the sentiments in it, definitely consider getting the dies because they're great, fit around lots of different things. Um, love the little edge pieces on them all. So again, this is called Unbounded Love. And um, these will be available to order. All the things that I'm showing you here today, all the new things will be available to order beginning on the 1st of May. Um, demonstrator pre-order is going on right now. So if you're not currently a demonstrator, now is a great time to join because you can pre-order as well. So um, yeah, I'm definitely glad it wasn't like ta Taiwan's earthquake. Like I said, this one, I think the, the, the worst that I've seen is that a couple of people had like their coffee at the coffee shop tip fell off the edge of the counter. <laughs> that's that's the most damage I've seen. And I shouldn't laugh because uh, hopefully there really isn't any damage. But um, like I said, everything I've heard, it sounds like it was it was a little shocking, but, but very minor in the grand scheme of things. So, um, all right. Online exclusives. If you are shopping um, out in the online store, make sure you take a peek at the online exclusives. They are things that kind of come and go. They're not attached to any catalog. Um, so you'll see them out there in the online exclusives. And if you like it, make sure you're grabbing them um, when they're still available. Available. So this is um, the, the zinnias, the Simply Zinnias items that are available now. Um, there are a couple of other newer things. The um, Encircled in Nature is out there. The new coffee suite is out there. So lots of good things out in the online exclusive. So keep an eye out for those. All right. 
let's get going with the card. So I started actually with a piece of designer series paper. Um, this is from the Thoughtful Journey six by six designer series paper. So this is part of that same um, Thoughtful Journey suite that the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set that we're using today is from. Um, and the paper is absolutely stunning. So um, the back side of it is even really pretty on this one. It's hard to, to decide which which side to put up <laughs> when you're using this paper. It's so pretty. I know that I will definitely go through multiple packs of it, but it is nice. Um, the, each of the sheets in here, each of the designs has four of the pattern in it. So you kind of get, you can make at least four of the exact same card. And then there are lots of things that you can kind of mix and match and use as well. So you don't have to use this piece of paper, but um, if you love this one and only want to use this one, you can create four cards with it. So all right, um, so started with that. This piece is cut to about three and seven eighths inches by about five and an eighth inches, which is kind of an odd cut, but um, I, I didn't want to layer it, but I wanted a little kind of framing on it. So I cut it a little bit different size than what I typically would. Um, I thought about cutting it down to five inches by three and three quarters, which is kind of a little bit more of a standard cut, but then I was cutting off more of the pretty paper. So I went back and forth and just decided on, it's an odd shape, size, whatever, but it is what it is, so we're going with it. <laughs> so um, so that is what I actually kind of based the card on and started it with. And then I grabbed a couple of the Fluid 100 pieces of paper, and we're going to do a little stamping on one of them and heat embossing. So I've got the image from the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set, and I'm going to grab my embossing buddy, and we're going to rub it over this odd-shaped piece of Fluid 100 um, <laughs> paper that I've got here. Um, and I'm going to grab Versamark ink, and we are going to heat emboss this pretty, um, I don't know, greenery, florally, plantish image um, on this piece of cards or piece of fluid 100 paper. And I actually know that I don't need to get all of the way down to the bottom on here because I trimmed it off when I was making my card front. So that's why I use this odd little scrap of paper <laughs> to um, uh, stamp on, and then. Closing that up, and I'm going to grab my white embossing powder, and I know that the white is currently sold out. Um, it will be returning, but hopefully you pick some up before it's gone. Um, we'll be returning, I guess, this fall. They they're, have a new manufacturer, and it's taking them longer to make it or something. I don't know. So anyway, there we go, and I'm sure it's very hard to see this. Probably can't even see it at all on screen, but there is embossing powder over the image, and then... Uh, set that aside and I'll grab my heat tool here and just going to turn that on. So we are actually going to be using the level one setting on the heat tool here in just a second um, after I do a little water coloring. But I've got a set on the level two setting for heat embossing. So the Stampin' Up! heat tool ha does have two settings on it, which I love. Um, so just giving it a second to um, heat up a little bit, warm enough to do the heat embossing with. So, all right, flip that around. Yeah, and I see a couple of you have got your pre-order coming. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, there's lots of good things to love in this catalog, most definitely. So, um, And again, I know this is going to be a little bit difficult to see. I can see it here in person, um, what it looks like. It's turning shiny and white, and so that means that the, it's done heat embossing. So I'm just kind of moving it around the panel here a little bit, trying to make sure I get everything embossed on it. And doo -doo -doo, almost done. All right, and again, I'm using the Fluid 100 watercolor paper, which is not something that I use a whole lot. I will say that I'm not, I'm not a big watercolor person. I like the way it looks. I'm just not, it's not something that I feel like I'm very skilled at. So, so I don't tend to do a lot of it, but this is really messy watercoloring. So that's why I figured that um, I could do it. So I've got my Mossy Meadow ink refill. You can also use an ink pad, which I'll show you in just a second how you can use an ink pad to do the same kind of technique with it. Um, and I've got one of the water painters here. I do have water in it, and I also have a little cup of water sitting over on the side if I uh, need it, but um, I think hopefully it'll work well enough that I've got enough water in the, the water painter that I can do this. So I'm gonna take a couple little drops of Mossy Meadow ink refill and just gonna put it on one of my blocks. Oh, no worries, Carol, glad that you're here and joining. And thanks, Rosie, I appreciate that. So, um, looks like it could be, oh, 
I, it, it could be my shirt. <laughs> I didn't even pay that much attention to what I was wearing today. It just happened to whatever was on the top of the pile in the closet. <laughs> so, all right. So I started by putting a little drop of water. I just squeezed my water painter and a little bit of water came out the brush end. Put a drop of that here on the block with my um, ink. And I'm just going to kind of mix the two together. And then I'm just going to do some of what I call very sloppy water coloring. If I want the um, leaf to be a little bit darker, then I'm going to pull from the top part of the, the um, little puddle that I've got going here. If I want it to be a little lighter, then I'm going to pull from the bottom where, the, where a little more water is mixed in with it. So you can kind of see that you can get different shades of the same, you know, obviously it's the same color, um, different shades that you'll get depending on where you pull from in your little puddle of ink that you've got sitting over there. And again, like I said, it's just very sloppy watercoloring, and I actually am intentionally going out of the line, lines because I want uh, the whole piece that I'm die cutting to have some sort of green on it. <laughs> if, and you'll see in a second, um, because the dyes have a little bit of a lip around them, I just want to make sure that, that it's all green and that there isn't any like stark white sticking out the edge of um, anything that I die cut. So, and again, I'll show you in a second why and you know what it looks like but right now i'm just trying to make sure i get all the little leaves done here and like i said just doing some sloppy water coloring which is always my favorite thing to do if it's messy and <laughs> doesn't require you staying in the lines that's my kind of coloring so all right i think that i got it all Oop, there's a little bit here that it looks like i missed down the center and again, I wanted it intentionally not to be all the same color of green. So I wanted some to be lighter, some to be darker. So that's why you see it looks really kind of splotchy and patchy and, you know, not necessarily all that pretty right now. But that was sort of what I wanted it to be before I die cut it. And I'm looking and going, I think I'm a little short on a couple of the ends of these. So I'm just making sure that I've got all the way out to the end done. And you can come back in after you die cut it. If you find that you missed something, you can come back in um, with your ink again and add more once the die cutting is done. But just trying to make sure that I've hopefully got most of it here covered as I'm yakking and painting <laughs> and not, not paying very much attention. So, all right. Um, so there we go. So that, that's how you can do the watercoloring with ink refills. So that's one way you can do it. If you don't have an ink refill, like I don't have for my Petunia Pop um, ink pad, grab another block, grab your ink pad, open it up, and then you can just kind of gently tap the block on the ink pad. Or you can use the Stampin' Write marker and scribble it on um, one of the blocks as well. You can certainly do that. Whatever is easiest for you, uh, whatever you have handy actually will work. So um, I've got another piece of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. And this one I'm actually not going to stamp on. I'm just going to die cut it. But I wanted to put some of the purple ink on it. Um, so I'm going to start with my bigger water painter brush. And I'm just putting water on the paper right now. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is it makes the ink a lot easier to move around if the paper is wet. So then I'm going to go over to my block. Same thing. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of the ink or a little bit of the water down onto the block so that I can mix it a little with the ink. And then I'm just going to come back over here and kind of do a messy watercolor-ish. This, you know, probably isn't even really considered watercoloring. It's just adding, <laughs> adding a little ink to the paper with the water painter. And that's kind of the look that I wanted. So again, I, I didn't want it to be perfectly all the same color, um, all done really nicely. I'm going to be die cutting this in just a second, so I'll show you what we'll do with it next. In the meantime, like I was telling you, we've got the two settings on the heat tool. So there's the level one setting that we're going to be using right now, and that is for drying. So if you do something like watercoloring and want to speed up the drying process a little bit, you can use the level one setting. And it just blows a little bit of kind of warm air on it. Um, it's not hot enough to heat emboss. So level two setting is for your heat embossing. And level one setting is just if you want to speed up the drying process a little bit, um, you can do that. So let me grab my other one. This one probably is mostly dry already, but I just want to make sure I give it a quick uh, run over with the heat tool. And I do find that with the water paper, the Fluid 100 water paper, it's a fairly thick paper. So sometimes I flip it to the back and dry from the back side as well just to make sure that it's completely dry all the way through before I do any die cutting with it. 
All right, and that is it. So let me grab my dyes here. Um, the purple kind of watercolor mess that I've got going on here, I'm gonna be cutting with this die, and it's one of those that's just an accessory die. And I'm just gonna place it here right on the straight down on it and run it through the die cutting machine. And again, I knew that I didn't need it to go all the way to the bottom. So I was using up my little watercolor paper scraps um, to do my die cutting. And then this one, there is a coordinating die that goes with it. So this is the die and I'm just gonna take that and run it through my die cutting machine. So I'll be right back. Um, picture is frozen. It seems to be fine here for me, Kathy. So maybe try going out and coming back in. Hopefully that'll fix it. If it's frozen for everybody, let me know. But like I said, I think I can see it's still going. So I think I'm good. Grab my little die cut pieces here. And so this is what you get with the green when you die cut that. And I got a couple of pieces here that did not pop out when I pulled it off the die. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those out and get rid of the icky looking parts. There we go. That looks better. I'm like, why? Ooh, that's not at all what it looked like before. So, all right, that's much better. So again, I wanted it to be kind of not all one color and not perfectly done. So that was that one came out perfectly. And then same thing with this one. So I just got my little die cut here and pulling it out of the watercolor paper. And there we go. So again, kind of have, it's like a little lighter, a little darker. That was kind of the look that I was going for with it. So, all right. Let me get this put back on my sheet over here so that hopefully I don't lose them. There we go, set those aside. And then we'll just throw that over. <laughs> hopefully it will, won't end up on the floor or maybe it will and the dog will pick it up later. So, all right, next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a couple of little glue dots to the back. And actually, like I said, like I was telling you, there are some spots on here that are a little whiter. If that bothers you and you don't like the look of it, grab your um, water painter again and just fill those in quickly before you stick them on your card front. So it's up to you what look you're going for um, and how much green you want on it as opposed to how much white, but all good, whatever you decide to do, it'll work. So I'm gonna take a couple little mini glue dots and we are going to stick them on the back of the green. And then I realized I should have put them on the back of the purple one first because that one has to go down on the paper first. Um, so I'm gonna take a little glue dot here and stick it down towards the bottom. And that's the only thing that I'm gonna secure this to the card front with because I know that I'm layering this piece over the top of it. That's gonna have quite a few more glue dots on it. So then I'm gonna take this piece and layer it over the top, making sure that I cover up my uh, extra glue dot there that I can see kind of peeking through. And I think we will go like that and call it good and just smooshing it down. Um, it feels like I need another glue dot because this is a little loose up here on the top. So I'm gonna grab another glue dot and tuck it right underneath where I know it's gonna be hidden and then stick that to the card front. There we go, that feels much more secure to me. So I think we're good to go on the glue dots. And then I'm gonna take my snips, which of course I did not grab. Uh, but thankfully they were handy. <laughs> and then I'm gonna flip it over and just trim this even with the edge of the paper here. And then same thing, I'm gonna trim off this one that's sticking out way out like that. And then I'm gonna wait for a second to trim this because I wanna see on my original one, I had aimed it down enough that I could leave it on the card front. But this one I'm gonna see once I get it layered on the top of here. It looks like I may need to trim off just the edge of it. And I didn't wanna trim it way down if I didn't need to because I, I thought it looked kinda of cool hanging off, off the edge just a little bit. So I'm gonna actually just take this and sort of trim it like that. And hopefully that'll be enough to get us here so that it's on the card front. And I think that's gonna work. Let me get the little pieces here out of the way and I will grab my stamp and seal. And we're gonna stick that, hopefully, to the card front. Again, just using stamp and seal on the back of my little piece of designer series paper. 
and I've got a crumb cake card base. Um, card base, my current one is cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. This one will definitely work if you like the standard book fold card, which is five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter down the side. So whatever your favorite card base is, um, this one will work for it. But I didn't have a second one cut that was the right size. So you're getting the same, same card that I made originally because this is my favorite card base. <laughs> so there we go. All right, got that stuck to the card front. Uh, next thing that I did was I grabbed a little bit of linen thread and I'm just gonna tie a little bow kind of here up in the air. And I make the little rabbit ears. Oops, gotta better get myself back on screen and then cross one over the other and pull the loop through hopefully, or start over again. Okay, rabbit ears, <laughs> cross them over one another, pull the loop through. I don't know why my fingers are not wanting to work. There we go, <laughs> pull the loop through. However it is, it's easiest for you to tie a bow. I always say, oh, rabbit ears are easy until I fumble through like that. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it didn't look quite as easy, but it really is. All right, um, let me grab my scissors here and we'll trim off the excess on the linen thread get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna grab another little glue dot and stick it to the card front. Um, stick the bow to the card front. And I'm just gonna stick it here kind of in the middle of the sky. And it's gonna look kind of icky, but nobody is gonna see it after we put the sentiment over the top of it. So it'll only be you and I that know that it looks not very pretty with the glue dot stuck on it. <laughs> so, all right. Um, got a piece of basic white cardstock and the sentiment from the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set. And then I'm gonna grab that Petunia Pop ink pad again and we're gonna stamp the uh, sentiment in Petunia Pop ink on the basic white cardstock. And Petunia Pop is one of the new in colors if you haven't seen them yet. So this is one of them that'll be around for at least the next two years, which is always fun. Um, and it's replacing, the, this new group is replacing the Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, Sweet Sorbet, uh, Parakeet Party, and I can't remember the last, oh, Tahitian Tide. So those are all going away here at the end of this current catalog, and this new set is replacing it. So, all right, I'm going to grab one of the um, Unbounded Love, I'm still learning the names of everything, Unbounded Love dies, and um, I'm going to die cut the sentiment with it. So this one's just a, a basic circle. It's got some little dashes around it. Uh, so I'll be right back. There's my little die cut sentiment and I'll put that back before I lose track of that too. Get that out of my way. So, oh, I yeah, the watercolor is actually, the watercolor look on this paper is beautiful. And then you can always add in your own little watercoloring like I did. And um, yeah, then you'll be all set. And I realized I gotta cut my little dimensional in half here. So I use half dimensionals. If you like whole ones, you can use whole ones, but I like the half size ones. And I'm sticking the dimensionals actually to my card front rather than sticking them to the back of the sentiment because I want to make sure that they land on either side of my bow that I've got on here. So just doing that, stuck them down first, peel off the backing, and then I'm going to place my sentiment over the top of those again because I'll know exactly where the sentiment will land at that point so I don't need to worry about it and stress out about it. Last thing that I added on the card front were a couple of the Petunia Pop um, pearls. These are the adhesive backed pearl trio and they're also in the upcoming catalog and they'll be available starting on the 1st of May. So again, I'm using the Petunia Pop. I think it's Misty Moonlight and Calypso Coral, I think are the two other colors in it, but of course I can't remember. <laughs> so that's what the colors look like to me. But um, since I'd used the Petunia Pop on here, that was the um, pearl that I picked to go with this card. And also use that on my sentiment as well. Flip that over and get it stuck here right underneath the twine where I want it to be. There we go. And we'll smoosh them down here on the card front. The inside of the card I kept pretty simple as well and just did a little quick stamping with Petunia Pop ink on basic white cardstock. And this is one of the images from the Thoughtful Wishes stamp set. And just gonna ink that up with Petunia Pop ink. Close that up before I stick my fingers in it accidentally. And just gonna stamp it here on the edge of the basic white panel. 
If you like it straighter up or the other way or the other corner or whatever, you can certainly do that however you like it. I just thought it looked kind of cool hanging off the edge. Then I'm gonna grab my stamp and seal again and we're gonna add a little to the back here around all the edges quickly and then we'll put it inside the card and we're going to be all done for today so i feel like this was a really quick card <laughs> and i like i said the designer paper on this one really does so much of the work that i didn't have to add much to it so all right got that stuck on the inside of the card gonna fold it closed here and use the bone folder to do a good solid crease on it and that's it so this is my card I made ahead of time. This is the one we made here today. So again, you know, just a little different look because the watercoloring every time you do it is going to turn out just slightly differently. Um, but yeah, it's really quick and easy. And that's my kind of watercoloring because it's super fast <laughs> and super easy. And you don't have to be precise at all. You can just kind of slop the color on and it's all good. So, all right, so there you go. Um, like I said, this the product that I used on here will all be available starting on the 1st of May. So if you're not a demonstrator, you'll be able to order it then these products are also available on the demonstrator pre-order right now so if you are a demonstrator or you want to join you can add this stuff as part of your starter kit um, or if you're a demonstrator you can pre-order these items so let me know if you have questions about anything i appreciate y'all being here have a wonderful rest of your day and hopefully we don't have any more shaking here in new jersey <laughs> so um, i will plan to be live around two o'clock eastern time next week tuesday and then again next week friday around two o'clock eastern time here on my youtube channel so we'll chat with y'all soon